Okay guys, we're back with Free Code Camp New Responsive Web Design and we're going to continue building our cafe menu. Using your new flavor class as a selector, set the text align properties value to left. Alright, so using your new flavor class, so we're going to do dot flavor curly brackets text align to left. Nice. Okay. That, next you want to align the price to the right. Add a class pr named price to your P element that has three dollars. So we're going to do um, class equals price. Now align the text to the right for the elements with the price class. So dot price and text align right. Perfect. That is kind of what you want, but now it would be nice if the flavor and price were on the same line. P elements are block level elements, so they take up the entire width of their parent element. To get them on the same line, you need to apply some styling to the P elements. So they behave more like inline elements. Add a class attribute with the value item to the first article element under the coffee heading. Okay, so we're going to add class equals item. The P elements are nested in an article element with the class attribute of item. You can style all the P elements nested anywhere in elements with a class class named item like this. So we're going to do dot item P and then we're going to do that. Using the above selector, add a display property with the value inline block. So the P elements will behave more like inline elements. Oh, okay. So display equals inline block. There we go. That's closer, but the price didn't stay over on the right. This is because inline block elements only take up the width of their content. To spread them out, add a width property to the flavor and price class selectors that have a value of 50% each. So we're going to add width 50% and then we're going to add width 50%. That did not work. Did it? It did. Well, that did not work. Styling the P elements as inline block and placing them on separate lines in the code creates an extra space to the right of the first P element, causing the second one to shift to the next line. One way to fix this is to make each P element's width a little less than 50%. Change the width value to 49% for each class to see what happens. Alright, now they're both on the same line. That worked, but there is still a little space on the right of the price. You could keep trying various percentages for the widths. Instead, use the backspace key on your keyboard to move the P element with the class price next to the P element with the class flavor so that they are on the same line in the editor. Make sure there is no space between them. Okay, so like that. Now go ahead and change both the flavor and price class widths to 50% again. 50. Now that you know it works, you can change the remaining article and P elements to match the first set. Start by adding the class item to the other article elements. So, article class. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to copy this and paste it. Paste it. 
paste it. Wait a minute. That was wrong. Paste it here and here. And this one needs to be a closing article. All right. Check your code. Next, position the other P elements to be on the same line with no space between them. So we need to go here. All right, and then here. Hazelnut. And mocha. To complete the styling, add the applicable class names, flavor, and price to the remaining P elements. Okay, so um, we added a class flavor. I see what we gotta do. Okay, so class equals flavor and Copy this part. And then we'll do class price. Copy that. Okay. If you make the width of the page preview smaller, you will notice at some point some of the text on the left starts wrapping around to the next line. This is because of the width of the P elements on the left side can only take up 50% of the space. Since you know the prices on the right have significantly fewer characters, change the flavor class width value to be 75 and the price class to 25. You will come back to the styling the menu in a few steps, but for now, go ahead and add a second section element below the first for displaying the desserts offered by the cafe. So, section, and then close that section. Add an H2 element in the new section and give it the text desserts. Add an empty article element under the desserts heading. Give it a class attribute with the item value. So, article class equals item. Nest two P elements inside your article element. The first one's text should be donut, the second's 150. Put them both on the same line, making sure there's no space between them. So, P element, we're gonna have no nuts. Close it. And then we're gonna have another P element. It says 150 and close it. All right. Wait a minute, what did I do? Oh. 150. For the two P elements you just added, add dessert as the value of the first P element. Plus, wait. Yeah, equals dessert and the price to the P element. So class price. Something does not look right. You added the correct class attribute value to the P element with donut as its text, but you have not defined a selector for it. Since flavor class selector already has the properties you want, just add the dessert class name to it. 
So we're just gonna do dot desserts. Okay, I think I have to add a comment. A comma, I mean. Below the dessert you just added, add the rest of the desserts and prices using three more article elements. So we're gonna copy this. And do two, three. We're gonna change this one to cherry pie. This to 275. Change this to cheesecake. And this to $3. And this one will be cinnamon roll. And that is going to be $250. Okay. Nice. You can give your menu some space between the content and the sides with various padding properties. Give the menu class a padding left, a padding left, and a padding right with the same value, 20 pixels. Okay, that looks better. That looks better. Now try to add the same 20 pix padding to the top and bottom. Padding top. Padding bottom. Since all four sides of the menu have the same internal spacing, go ahead and delete the four properties and use a single padding property with a value of 20 pixels. The current width of the menu will always take up 80% of the body elements width. On a very wide screen, the coffee and dessert appear far apart from their prices. Add a max width property to the menu class. Max width 500 pixels. You can change the font family of text to make it look different from the default font of your browser. Each browser has common fonts available to it. Change all the text in your body by adding a font family property with the value sans serif. So font family sans serif. It is a bit boring for all the text to have the same font family. You can still have the majority of the text sans serif and make just the H1 and H2 elements different using a different selector. Style both the H1 and H2 elements so that only these elements use impact font. So H1 and H2. We got those there, but that also includes the P elements. So we're going to do H1, H2 elements, and we're going to use uh, font family impact wait a minute what did I do style both h1 so that only these elements use impact you should set the font family to impact so that's what I did oh wait h1 and h2 Should I be doing them separately? That seems silly. You should use an H1, H2 selector. That's what I did. So let's delete this. H1, comma, H2. You 
you should set the font family to impact. Oh, maybe it has to have a capital I. That was literally it. You can add a fallback value for the font family by adding another font name separated by a comma. Fallbacks are used in instances where the initial is not found slash available. Add the fallback serif and after the impact font. So fallback serif. Serif is fallback. Add the fallback font serif. Uh, so maybe we do comma serif and get rid of this. Yep. Okay. Um, make the established 2020 text italicized by creating an established class selector and giving it the font style property with the value italic. italic. All right, so establish 2020. So we need dot established class selector, and we're gonna have font family and a font style italic. And then we need to go back over here and do establish 2020, and then we have to do class equals established. There we go. Now apply the established class to the, oh, I think I already did that. Nope, it took it away. To, do, 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 do. So, Class equals established. The typography of heading elements, e.g. h1, h2, is set by default values of users' browsers. Add two new type selectors, h1 and h2. Use the font size property for both, but use the 40 pixels for the heading h1 and 30 for the h2. So why would I not just add that to the one that I already have? Font size. Oh wait, I see. So I gotta do one. This one font size equals thirty. H2 font size 40. And we got an extra curly bracket there. No, that didn't work. Your H1 element should be 40. I'm messing up. And then 30 for H2. Okay. Add a footer element below the main. So footer. Where you can add some additional information. All right, inside the footer, add the P element. Then nest the anchor A in the P so that it links. https dot slash slash free www.freecodecamp.org and has the text visit visit our website um, did I do something wrong there Yes, I did. Your new A element should be nested within your new P element. You should have exactly one A element. It is. P 
E A Hang on, let me take a peek at the A element in the P that links to this. You should have exactly one A element. Do I not need to say that? No. Let me restart. P. And that's L A hooray, equals I forgot on um, HTTPS dot slash slash www dot free code camp dot org and then that's gonna say visit our website and now we're gonna say slash A slash P there we go. The new A moment should have the text visit our website. Does that not have the text visit our website? It's right there. A href https visit our website. What am I missing? Uh, visit our well, I bet you it's the capitals that's getting me. Yep, that was exactly what it was. That's really annoying. Um, add a second P element below the one with the link and give it the text one two three free code camp drive. So P one two three free slash P. Submit. You can use an HR element to display a divider between sections of different content. First, add an HR element between the first header element and the main. Okay, so right here, we're going to add HR. Oh, it added a nice little line there. Oh wait, it says they're self-closing, so I didn't need that. Um, okay. The default properties of an HR element will make it appear as a thin gray line. You can change the height of the line by specifying a value for the height property. Change the height of the HR element to be three pixels. So we're going to do HR curly brackets. Height three pixels. And look there, it made it thicker. Change the background color of the HR element to brown so it matches the color of the coffee beans. So, background color brown. Alright. Congratulations, your code passes. Okay, guys. I'm going to go ahead and end this here, but you guys let me know in the comments if you guys are following along and if you have what you've thought is it easy for you guys, is it hard for you guys, let me know. But thank you for hanging out and I'll see you next time. Bye!